So today I'm going to show you all how to set up clips for, uh, particularly for like low level debugging and testing of C code and assembly. And I'm going to show you how to set it up on Linux Mint. Um, so first we need to get in the terminal and apt install build tech essential, GDB and Python. Build essential is a lot of, it's just a bundle of tools and libraries that help you develop software as uh, libraries and uh, GCC, things like that. GDB is going to be our debugger, and Python is just, you always need Python around. So after all that's installed, we're going to open up the browser, and we are going to Google Eclipse C++ Download. And that should take you to Eclipse's website, and at the top you should see that the, the package is really old, and to click here for the newer one. So you click there, click on Linux, click Download. It should download fairly quickly. Um, this is uh, usually better than installing it through uh, Package Manager, um, Apt, or Pac-Man, whatever Linux distribution you're on, um, because what this is going to do is going to fetch the latest version, and it's also going to set it up, um, you'll see here in just a second, for uh, specifically C and C++, whereas Eclipse uh, traditionally just kind of sets everything up for Java development. So after we click C++, it goes through, goes through the, the download. Um, also one more thing in apt is that you uh, need Java, Eclipse runs on Java. So in apt you can install the default JRE and that gets Java installed for you uh, before you run this installer. But once you have all that done, uh, should be good to go, installs, when it's done there's a green launch button and starts it up. Of note that uh, it places a folder on the desktop with a uh, desktop launcher inside of that folder. You can just copy that launcher to the desktop, delete the folder, and then edit the launcher to get rid of the ridiculously long name that they have for it. Click save and you're good to go. For the workspaces, just leave it as default if you don't want to change it. And you're good. Uh, so now we have Eclipse up and running, and depending on your distribution and the window theme and all that stuff, um, it may look a little wonky, so what we're going to do is we're going to go back into the browser and Google for Eclipse Marketplace, and then just type in theme in the, uh, in the search bar there. And what we're looking for is this darkest dark theme with dev style. Um, you, can, you can leave it default if you want, um, but it it really messes with a lot of window managers and different Linux distributions. Um, and this one just kind of smooths everything out. Um, so what you do is you drag the install button from the page onto the window for Eclipse and it will open up this uh, extension installer. And we can see here that it opens up the page and then if we expand the window of Eclipse we can see that install button again and we can just click it and then it opens up a Eclipse Marketplace uh, installer. And it should go and find all the dependencies there. And then you just click Confirm, and it'll go through and install it just like normal software. Of note is that you can go to the Help menu and go into the Eclipse Marketplace. It is listed there, but when you search specifically for like this dev style theme, it's not in there for some reason. So that's why we had to go through the browser and drag that button onto Eclipse. And in the bottom right hand corner you'll see the percentage of um, the install and how far it's made it. Give it, uh, give it just a minute and it should be good. As soon as it's good it asks you to restart Eclipse. Go ahead and do that. We can close the browser. We're all done with that. And then once you start Eclipse again, it's going to ask you, you know, which which kind of theme do you want? Do you want a light theme? Do you want a dark theme? I, I particularly like dark themes. It's a lot easier on the eyes. And should be good to go. Uh, there's supposed to be another little, oh, there it is. Um, another uh, configuration menu that pops up, but we'll, we'll deal with that in just a second. So to... It's always good to have like a little testing program around. So if we just go up to file a new project, C++ manage build, and then 
select the hello world and CEC project and just name it whatever you want like testing we'll go through and next next finish this and what this is going to do is just set up a sample C project with hello world in it if we close out the welcome window welcome window and then click through down in testing to get to the uh, testing.c now we have a example hello world program so I'm just going to type some things in here um, you know, include a couple of headers that we normally need standard library standard in and out uh, string.h and then just a typical uh, main with argc and argv typically use that a lot when we're testing out exploits and reversing things and then we'll just throw something silly in here like hey and uh, then close that out with um, just returning back so the the reason for this is I'm, I'm going to show you how to set this up for a focus on reverse engineering and debugging at a lower level without actually having, having to get directly into GDB outside of this IDE so if we go up to uh, the settings there and we go down to uh, the tool settings we can see that uh, GCC is listed in the command so what we want is GCC and then space tech MASM equals Intel and that's going to change our assembly uh, interpretation or output uh, to Intel when we're actually looking at it um, and particularly for inline ASM uh, this isn't for how it's going to be viewed in the debugger we actually have to do something else for that but the MASM equals Intel is going to allow us to write inline assembly in the Intel syntax instead of ATT and I'll show you that here in a little bit so um, once that's done, we just hit the bug and just double click uh, line seven there. And uh, we had a breakpoint on there. And we go over to the little bug right there on the right hand side. And we go to local C, E, C application. And then always save the resources before launching. And then go ahead and switch the perspective to the debug perspective. And this is the default debugging perspective a um, couple useful things there's a variable window there's threads window over on the left but we want a little more than that so what we can do is there's a memory window down on the bottom we can drag that to the right hand side so it actually takes up half of the bottom right hand window and then we can also uh, drag the registers tab from the bottom to the uh, upper right hand corner there and kind of split the the variable window uh, alongside the register window so we can actually see the the general purpose registers and then we can change the the format of all of these to hex a little easier a little easier to see and then this variable window is um, it's really nice to have because it'll show you the local variables and scope of wherever you're at, wherever you're currently debugging. And it's nice to see those values um, just really quickly. So once we <clears throat> once we get things spaced out, okay, we can go up to the uh, top there and there's a little button with an I. And that I enables instruction uh, stepping. And that's how we get the view for the assembly. And for some reason the the colors are really weird um, so we can click the little three dots on the window here right here go to preferences and then change the ruler background color to something darker so it doesn't stand out so much and that's just a little much easier on the eyes all right so um, once we get everything kind of sorted out here I'm just going to drag the variables below the the assembly because we're not debugging a whole lot all right working on the space in here get get it how you like um, there's a button in the disassembly window as well um, to show the source or not show the source that's why you see some source code interleaved in there with the uh, with the assembly but down here in the memory window, we can uh, we can either put in variables to watch, 
or we can put in registers with a dollar sign and we can also change the format of the of the layout here so here I just change it to one single column of 64-bit uh, values uh, to give us more of a like stack looking view and we'll just switch the the source off I don't, I don't really like that how it interleaves in there but it is handy just to kind of see where that lines up with the specific instructions All right, so now we're good to go. So we can click on the debugger console down here and just do single steps. And you see that it leaves a little trail of instructions in the disassembly window that, uh, that have been executed. And yeah, so we can step just like normal. We can use the buttons at the top or we can use typical GDB commands in the debugger console. But what we'll do now as well is go ahead and click into your C code and then go up to project and the settings go down to debug and GDB and what we're going to do here is we're going to change the disassembly uh, flavor so if you noticed in the disassembly window inside of Eclipse it was AT&T syntax um, I really dislike AT&T syntax along with most of the world but most of the tools are uh, still in AT&T syntax so. so what we have to do is create a GDB init file and that's going to be in your home directory. It's a hidden file. And we just set disassembly tack flavor intel. That's all we're going to do. We save that. Close out. Close the terminal. Go ahead and browse for that file. And it should be right there. Then we just hit apply. Close that up. And then the next time that we debug in the disassembly window, we should see Intel syntax. And there we go. Um, I, I think that's just a lot cleaner. There's not percent signs everywhere on every single register and value, and that, that just gets really annoying to me. Um, but yeah, so that cleans up the window a little bit. Um, we still have our general purpose registers here. You can see everything go ahead and stop the program so if we change our, our code a little bit and just put some just some variables in here um, so integer short um, what else the car or something just set all of them to a negative one so these are all signed variables so I'll go ahead and debug again go ahead and click over to the uh, disassembly here and then Get all of our registers, get our debugger console. Now we can single step. So we're single stepping, we're stepping, and now we can see where the um, negative ones are being put into the local variables there. We can also see that the C code variable window down here, we can also click on the variables and it will give us different representations down the bottom of what that number looks like in different uh, variable types, um, which is pretty handy to see um, just at a quick glance you know what is this in hex what's a binary octal um, etc and you can change the format as well for down there if you wanted to see more like unsigned and things and yeah well um, if we stop that um, yeah all right so um, at the beginning, uh, we went to the settings here and we looked at tool options. And in the GCC line, we added MASM equals Intel. And what that's for, um, again, I'm not particularly fond of AT&T syntax. Um, but in reverse engineering, malware analysis, exploit development, um, a lot of times you want to test out some assembly um, without you know using NASM or, or something else you want to interleave it with like C code so we can do that with inline assembly so we can do that with ASM ASM parentheses and then in quotes we can start writing our Intel syntax assembly like move VAX comma one and you have to end each line with a semicolon and as we'll see here when we debug it we'll see in the disassembly window uh, if we step past the, uh, the prologue here 
go down. So now we're on the line. It's moving one into EAX. So we have a one for one uh, representation of our uh, assembly. So you can use this to test out instructions. Um, it's a really great learning tool. Um, it's a really quick way if you're if you're just not sure what an instruction will do. Um, yeah, you can just pop in here and interleave that with some C code and uh, see what's going on. So that's a it's a really handy way um, just to always have this kind of test project laying around. So you can just throw some C code in it, throw some assembly. Um, do this quick debugging without having to open up GDB directly or um, or uh, IDA or, or Cutter or any of these things or object dumping a file. You can just kind of come here to play around with some code, um, get some experience, and you're good to go. So yeah, if you all have any questions about uh, this video or anything else, uh, hit us up at ringzerolabs.com.